attachments. It was logical that we would form attachments to things. I put an ego. And so we become really attached to many things. Physical objects, identities, uh, relationships. We become deeply attached to those. So how do we unwind these attachments? I mean, Buddhism 101 or 001 is attachments cause suffering. You can figure this out yourself. You look at the things that you are attached to. If you lose them or lose a relationship or a loved one or we're last night talking about somebody had their dog, dog died, about how deeply you become attached to other things, especially if they reciprocate in some way. It's very difficult to have a pet die, for example. Very difficult. We're deeply attached to them. And so one way to do this is to say, well, I'm just not going to have any attachments. You can do that, but it ain't easy. I'll chant for you here the anti-attachment song. <laughs> it's also the happiness song. This is really where you, how you get happy, is get rid of attachments. This is, you know, this, this is a simple way to do it. But it's very difficult. And so attachments, yes, equal suffering. You will suffer as much and as often as you have attachments. And the stronger they are, the more you will suffer. Guaranteed. An hour later, there's no free lunch. You let go of them now, or you let go of them later, but you will let go of them. So, I will sing you the attachment song. This is the happiness song. I will also, and this is a warning now, this is a warning. I will do, I will do some hand things with it. We call these hand things mudras. And these are actually secret mudras. So, before you leave today, you have to go through a little machine out there that will scrub your brain of these knowledge of these signals. I really, I, I was, I was talking to one of the, the uh, probably one of the most popular uh, meditation teachers, Buddhist meditation teachers in the country. We did a seminar one on one. I was going through, we're talking about attachments, and I said, "Well, let me show you this this thing that we do with attachments, with this happiness song." He said, "I showed it to him." He said. That's a secret. That's a secret teaching. He's in the Maha Mudra. This is a mudra. Maha is great mudra. That's a secret teaching. So be aware. You are now learning secret information. It should not go beyond this room or beyond this certainly universe. <laughs> but I'll do this. Let me get some water here. But I'll show you how this goes. And it really is a very simple structure. It's called Nirvana. Nirvana. Shatikam, six verses. So six verses on nirvana. How it works is you've got three lines of four things. And it ticks off the four things that you should be, not be attached to. It goes through every piece and part of your body, every piece and part of your mind, every kind of relationship, every kind of emotion. And you get a chance to look at these things one by one and say, okay, the fifth verse has a pita naiva me naiva mata na jamaha, which was, I have no mother, I have no father. What? Of course I have a biological father, brother, and mother. And you say, well, is there some way in which I am untouched by that relationship to my mother and my father? And the last, the fifth line goes, bandur nimitram, I have no family. I have no friends. Guru Nayavishisha, no, no teacher and no student. Is there some way in which you can envision that there is something that is in that way not defined by that relationship, that is not attached to maintaining that relationship? I have no desires. I have no ignorance. I have no delusion. I have no desire to have anybody else's thing. I have no pride. It goes through all of those things. So I'll do this. You won't understand the words. That doesn't cost you anything else. Uh, since it's in Sanskrit and all the Romance languages, and by extension English, 
that is the root language for all of those languages, you will recognize perhaps some energy. Like when I say, pita naiva me naiva mata, mata may feel something to you. It is mother. Some, that kind of root is common across all of Romance languages at some level, that kind of sound. So the nice thing about Sanskrit is you don't understand it yet, thankfully. Uh, and so you, you can't really grab it. So you have to feel it. And you can feel what the energies are behind those words because there are the roots of your language. English is a hodgepodge of Romance languages, as you know. And so all of those things have some deep sensory meaning to you. So I'll do this thing now. If you don't want to see this secret teaching, close your eyes. Because if it gets burned into your consciousness, we'll have to expunge it. Okay? Mano buja ahankar chitaninaham nachasru trajipe nachagran netre nachavyo mabumi nutejo Vayu Chitananda Rupaham Shivoham Shivoham. That's the fourth line, which I just chanted. Chitananda Rupa Shivoham. Chit Chit Ananda. Ananda is bliss, and Chit is consciousness. So it says, I am blissful consciousness. I'm not any of these things I've just assumed I was attached to. I am blissful consciousness. And the last part of that, shivoham, shivoham, yah, shiva. Uh. Now, to, in contemporary terms, it is I am everything and I am nothing. If you are nothing, you can be everything. Or you can just say, I am everything, I am everything. That's what shiva is to those people. So, okay, so that's the summary attachments, summary line I am bliss consciousness, I am everything. I am everything. Okay? Nacha prana sanjo no vai pancho vayu no vasapteratu no pancho koshaha no vak pani padum the chopas. The Bayu Chitanan Darupaha Shivoham Shivoham No made vase a ragao No made love Matsar Yabavaha Nadarmo Nacharto Nakamo Namokshahas Chitahanan Darupaha Shivoham Shivoham Napunyam the papam, the saukyam, the dukam, the mantra, the tirtam, the veda, the yagnyaha, a humble genum nai, a bojam, the boktaha. Chitanan Darupaha Shivoham Shivoham No memory to the Shanga No Majati Bedaha Pita Naiva Mainai Mata Jan Maha, the 
Bandhumetram Guru Nai Pashishyaha Chitanan Darupaha Shivoham Shivoham Aham near Vikalpo Nirakararupaha Vibhut Vyap Yusarva Trusarva Inriyanu Sadame Samatvam Namuktaha Nabandaha Chitananda Rupaha Shivoham Shivoham Om Shanti 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 And the way you can work with Nirvana Shatikam, it's in my first book, Happiness Beyond Thought. Um, Rich Doyle, who's my co-conspirator, um, we made a video called Shut Up and Chant, um, which is subtitled as we go through and chant it, line by line, transliteration, translation. Uh, so you can follow it along as we, as we chant it. Um, it's found lots of places. It's a, I've done this, I don't want to tell you how many thousands of times, literally, and I've done this thousands and thousands of times. There's still something new every time. Because if you, neuroscientifically, if you hold on to, um, I'm not my family, and you pick somebody in your family, if you just hold that concept of family, and you just hold it in conscious and just see what comes up. You just family, family, family. You sit there. And almost always, one person will come up. One particular salient attachment, you know, problematic relationship you have in family. Mm -hmm. so you will have problems. And that person will come up. And you can feel your attachment to this story about that person. And I'm not going to talk this morning. It's, it's, a, it's a feeling. You can feel, you can have this person in consciousness and then have them out for a second. Have them in consciousness, out for a second. You can feel the difference between having them not in consciousness and having them in consciousness. That's how attached you are. If it's like, oh my God, it's an OMG type, oh. Then that's one to work on. And if you, reason, if you stick on that for a while, what you can do, there are two very powerful cognitive behavioral therapy based protocols to work on things like this. Byron Katie stuff and the Sedona method. If you don't know Byron Katie stuff, just look up the work. I can, I can give you the work. It's work is five statements. There's now the work, but it's just five simple statements. Sedona is only three simple statements. You know, what is it true? Can you be sure that it's true? How do you feel when you have it? How do you feel without it? So just as likely to be complete 180 degrees wrong. That's the, that's the, the work. A bazillion videos, a bazillion programs and books, just Byron Katie. And the Sedona method's even simpler. You bring that feeling, that attachment, maybe it's anger, maybe it's sadness, into consciousness. And you say, is this a useful feeling for me, this sadness that I have towards this person? And you say, yeah, I want to keep that feeling around. <laughs> and the second session is, well, is it really useful for you to have that in consciousness, to keep it around? You say, yes, I want to really want to keep that in my consciousness. And the third person is, well, the third one is, is there some time in the future you might let go of that? No, never. I want to keep that in consciousness forever. Okay, this is all the writer talking. Underneath that, the elephant's saying, whoa, hold it. That's under consideration. 
You know, we can let go of this? Really? And so the guys are running around, or gals, running around saying, come on, come on, come on. We can. He doesn't even care about it. He says that, but we can look at it now. You know, we, nobody pays attention to him anyway. He's clueless. But down here, we can work on that. And so what you'll do is you can, even if you say, no, no, never, you'll find the next time you go back to that situation, that relationship, that attachment, it's changed. It's changed because the elephant said, we don't care about what he is to say or she is to say. We're down here working on this thing, and we think it's a waste of time. It's a bunch of garbage. You know, it's from way long ago. It doesn't matter anymore. We're out of here. And they will dial it down. It's these guys, you know, the, line, the alignment, the betting people. They say, this is not worth it. They do a cost-benefit analysis on this attachment. They say, huh, it's not happening. It was long ago, 30 years ago. Didn't have it, no possible meaning to me anymore. Let go of it. And then the elephant starts to let go of it. And the elephant's driving the bus. And the elephant says, okay, we're, gonna ch- we're changing this. And you go back because the writer says, oh, oh, it's changed. Wow. Well, I did a good job on that. I really worked on that one. I almost solved this thing completely. That was really good at work I did there. It wasn't that anything to do. It was all done offline. But you can go through all of those segments and go back again and again and again. If it's a very deep relationship, a mother or something, not a particular challenge. There is lots, there are many sub-networks hooked together. You don't just have one situational relationship or experience with your mother or your father or your brother or your sister. You have lots of them. And each one of those has a different coding with a different you hooked into that. And as you go back into those, you start to open up this network, those start to unzip. They don't all unzip at once because you've got to work up this one thing, and there's other ones tied into it. And then they're simple, and they start to un- they start unzip. So you'll be up here, and a rider and say, oh, it's, you know, it's boot, 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 boot. down below, the elephant's busy working. You know, it's taking this strip up, repurposing it, taking this one up, this one, this one. So it goes, what looks like fits and starts from up on top. But the elephant's down there busy. It's a good thing we can't watch the elephant do what it's doing. You'd be, oh no, what are you doing down there? Stop that, stop. It would just, just let the elephant go. The elephant's doing it. Just keep revisiting that particular entity, the being, whatever relationship is, and then let that keep working and working and working. And the elephant will, the elephant's very parsimonious. It doesn't want to, it doesn't have, only has so much real estate. It doesn't want to waste the real estate. So it goes around looking for places where it has a lot of stuff tied up. If you've got a big relationship with some person important to your life, it's got a lot of hooks into it. It's going to take a while to unwind those. But they, you can't unwind them. Could I let go of it, number one? And you can say, yes, I could let go of it. Sometimes they come up and it's like something happened to you when you were seven years old. Obviously, it's stupid to keep it around. I mean, there's no value anymore. You aren't seven years old. Say you were abused as a seven-year-old. You're not seven years old anymore. You're no longer powerless. You can defend yourself. You can protect yourself. So, yes, I can let go. It's stupid to keep it around. Even, even the writer can decide that. There's no reason to keep it around. And then that one, is it useful to continue keeping this? Just, no, of course it's not useful. It has no protective value. That person can't do that to me anymore. And the thing is, well, when you can let go, I can let go of it right now. And you can do that. And if you just do yes, yes, now, it goes. I didn't believe it until I started trying it. It's really powerful. It doesn't always go all the way, but if it's something so obvious like you abuse a seven-year-old, it can go very quickly. There's still a lot of wounding in there, and I just, because I am a wounded person, I attract a lot of wounded people. <laughs> I just seem to you know, seek out fellow wounded people. And so we work along with this thing. But you, you can, on these old, old 30, 40, 50-year-old memories, just let go of them. They have no value anymore. Zero. You're not the same person. You had a bad relationship with a girlfriend or a boyfriend once. Oh, I'll never get over it. I can't imagine ever having a relationship again. I mean, just, just let go of it. Because if you don't, the next person you meet as a potential partner, you're going to have this cloud over you. I can never have a relationship. It's going to be just like that one. Well, it's not going to be like that last one. It'll be different. Because they've changed, you've changed. What you thought they were thinking, they weren't even thinking. And what they thought you were thinking, you weren't even thinking. 
And so you've extrapolated stuff that isn't true. So as much as you can, let go of those old beliefs you've got from past pain. They don't serve you in the moment. You cannot meet somebody fresh, now, present, in this moment, with no conditioning. Even your kids, even your partner. Can you meet them without past conditioning? Can you just be there, present, with no story? It's amazing how different it becomes if you don't have a story when you're meeting with them. If you've got scores you've got to settle, you know, pluses and minuses, well, she did that yesterday, and I did this yesterday. If you've got that going on, it's never going to stop. Somehow you've got to find a way to let go of that and just be present for what's there now because it's different than what it was 10 seconds ago or 30 seconds ago or a minute ago. Yeah, somatically, absolutely. I mean, if, if you've, and that's, that's why I really push doing a physical exercise of some kind along with meditation. If you're just doing meditation, take like the Buddhists, and they don't do any physical practice, and it's got to be something that has, really works your, your body. Because we lock things in our body, centrally. We lock them all through our body. And so if you aren't somehow unwinding those at the same time you're doing self-inquiry, for example, or letting go of attachments, you're not going to get to it. By something else or the same yeah. thing? Well, the same thing. You're, you're, you're in situation, you're still being well, I mean, what, what, I, what, what I do, is we just keep going back through th- this. You know, go back to like Byron Katie. I mean, if you keep getting, if you keep getting re, say you feel, you've got a feeling here. You've had some trauma in the past that's locked up in here. Mm-hmm. If you, you can actually bring your consciousness to that place and move into it and see if there's a story there mm-hmm. to be able to work with the Byron Katie or Sedona. You just, you know, just feel what's going on there and see if there's a story. I mean, see if you can see how big it is, what color it is, what shape it is. And somehow, you know, get a focal point on it in a way that you can begin to see if something might, a story might come out. There's a story there. Maybe it's got a Radcon sign on it. But there's a story there. And the story, if it's really a bad trauma from a long time ago, it's really a bad, bad thing, and it's still being repeated, then it may peel off very slowly. You've got to work, the, peel the onion very slowly. But you've got to keep going back and going back and going back. Well, you do what you can. I mean, if you, if you can't get anything except a feeling, then you can, what you can do is just say, okay, who has this feeling? Who has this emotion? I mean, to whom does this thought occur, this emotion occur? And all you've got is the feeling. To whom does this occur? It's the old, old Ramana Maharshi wording, but to whom does this occur? And you say, and just sit there. And sometimes, if you do that, you will get a clearer look at it. So you're kind of coupling, surrendering into letting it speak into who it is that's listening to it, who it's manifesting for, without putting any more words on it. Just see if it comes out that way. But try to let it get it to express, and don't run away from it. It may feel like it's, ooh, don't go there. But go there. It's never as bad as you think it is. It may feel horrible, but just go into it. That's, that's my experience. Here. Yes, sir. With your work, I was able to dissolve, and I mean that I, you know, uh, the ref- referential thoughts about me, mine, uh-huh. I do this, I do that, so there's no power there anymore, mm-hmm. you know. So what is bubbling up is a lot of fear. Mm-hmm. I mean, deep fear, really deep, it's like from the beginning of uh, humanity. Right. And... I wonder if there's a way to speed up the elephant process. <laughs> the elephant can speed up. Well, the elephant will do what it does. Uh, and it's, it's got its own timeline. I mean, we would like to be as the writer. Come on. Yeah. Let's go, elephant. Let's go faster, faster, faster. Right. Not happening. And I, the worst thing you can do is to get into it, get into a fight with it that way, is that I, the writer, 
I'm telling you, the elephant, what you should do. You should speed up. The elephant's not paying attention. It's not happening. And so the very act of trying to do something to move the process along works against you because there's a doer established there trying to make something occur. And these ahas and ahas only happen when we aren't there. If we're there, they don't happen. And you watch how fast something comes in. The ego comes in and says, oh, oh, that was great, let's do that. I'm going to do that again. But it only happened because the ego wasn't there. As soon as the ego comes in to do something to make it happen again, no, it'll never happen. So just, it's just patience. It's perseverance and patience. You can't get put, there's nobody else. Yeah, yeah to, to me, yeah, to me it's, it's, it's somatically it's very important. I mean, I, I do a lot of yoga, and I've done a, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of yoga. And I do them in a way that is flowing, continuous, moving, so there's not a stopping place where the mind can get involved. And sometimes if you're doing a yoga postures, and, and just you can spon- let them be spontaneous. And this is one of my first yoga teacher training, I've my many yoga teacher training was to be have spontaneous yoga flows. And what you do is you do some breathing practices, some semi chaotic breathing practices. You, you don't have to do them, though. But just see what your body needs to do. Your body has an enormous wisdom all by itself. If you can just let go and let go what your body needs to do to fix it right now itself, it's amazing what happens. Just lay on the floor and just close your eyes and just feel what your body wants to do. And it may find your mind may be starting to do this, do this, do this, 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 this. It doesn't make any sense what it's doing, but it's doing these things. And you say, my God, what is it up to now? <laughs> but but you, can, you can feel. It feels right. You can just feel how it goes. You can feel the body re- fixing itself. If you get a bad misalignment or something, it's amazing how it, from day to day, I, well, I watch it do this thing. All, my stuff's all spontaneous. And so I can I watch what happens. And I can see what it's doing. I say, oh, because I've done so much. Oh, that's why it's doing this. Because yesterday I did a lot of this. I was doing a lot of work outside. I was this kind of thing. I was sitting a lot, hips better. Now you can just see the body knowing what it needs to do to fix that problem, that misalignment, that trauma. I mean, it will unwind it. Just give it a chance. I mean, trust your body. The body is so much smarter than the rider. I mean, even the somatic body is so much smarter than the writer. As far as food choices, I like to think, let it eat what I want to eat. Except refined sugar. I don't do refined sugar. I, I, when I can't have glycemic, so it doesn't work. I, can, I crash. So, you know, there was no you know, refined sugar packets sitting around the African belt 45,000 years ago. We didn't have that. You know, we evolved to eat complex carbohydrates, not simple sugars. And so I just take them off. It's easy for me because I crash. I just take them off the table. I do something else. And there were no Doritos also on the African belt. (laughs) Huh? No Doritos. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were no Doritos on the belt either. So salted fat is not something that we as a species had. We had complex carbohydrates. We had, if we had you know, any sugars we had were very complicated. Fruits, etc. We didn't have it. No Doritos. No Fritos either? No Fritos. No Fritos. <laughs> Fritos aren't so bad. <laughs> no, no Fritos, no Doritos. We didn't have those things. Gary, what if you answered your question? Let, let, let me get Larry. Go ahead. What if the answer to the question is it useful? Then keep it. Still an attachment. <laughs> if, if it's useful, keep it. No. no. If, 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 it, if you find an attachment, it's a useful attachment, fine. But be forewarned that you will pay later. <laughs> <laughs> you will pay. There's no free lunch on this one. Anything you're attached to, no matter how wonderful it is, you will hate losing it and you will suffer for it. And the more you love it, the more you're attached to it, the more you will... It's just it, it, it's thousands and thousands of years of experience of our species. You got attachments, you will eventually suffer from them.